Uh, since we're doing some online learning because of quarantine, um, I'm going to do a video on some transmission diagnosis today. I don't happen to have a Toyota with a bad transmission, but I do have a Honda at home with a bad transmission. So we're going to go through some diagnostic process of this thing and see if we can figure out what's up with this transmission. Um, normal ticket. I pull a repair order and I got a transmission issue. The very first thing I would normally do is check transmission fluid. Now then on modern day transmissions, um, with all this dipstickless transmissions that take forever to check fluid and got to be the perfect conditions, I might do that later. Um, I might do a visual inspection instead. And if the transmission doesn't appear to be leaking, I'm going to assume that it has fluid in it. Um, the next thing I'm probably going to do is a stall test uh, in the parking lot at work, do a stall test, um, do it a times just to make sure that the transmission is not going to leave me stranded on the side of the road. Um, after we do a stall test, I'm going to take it for it passes. I'm going to take it for a drive. We'll observe all the conditions and see what we come up with. Um, then we'll we get back to the shop. We've got some we've got a list of symptoms. We might do a line pressure test and see what's going on. Now this car behind me uh, it came in with the check engine light on and a transmission code. It was in limp in mode, uh, so the transmission drove really strange at that point. I pulled the solenoid off, did the inspection procedures, the resistance test, it passed. Uh, you put electricity to it and it would go click. So at that point, I determined the solenoid is probably good. So I talked to some of the Honda guys at work, um, and they said that in the ship, they used to replace these solenoids all the time, and then they showed me a service bulletin that had all the same symptoms that I had and the service bulletin said to replace the solenoid. So I put a solenoid in it. Um, now after putting a solenoid in it, it still drives weird. Um, the car starts off in second gear and uh, so it's got no power at all. So we'll see what we find on this thing when we start doing some tests. So first thing we want to do is a stall test. Now then, a normal stall test. Um, we would do Transmission at operating temperature, then we're going to put it in drive. And we're gonna put our foot on the gas and foot on the brake as hard as we can for 15 seconds or less and see what happens. So I've got it in drive here. We'll go over here. One foot on the brake, one foot on the gas. If you don't have a tachometer, you're going to have to use your scan tool as your tack. So let's see what we get. All right, 2800 RPMs. That's what the stall spec is for this car, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in reverse. We'll do it again in reverse. Now then the book says to wait a minute or two between stall tests so we don't overheat the fluid. But I would rather this thing fail in the parking lot than make me have to walk or call for a tow truck. So I'm going to beat on it right here. If a stall test causes the transmission to fail, that transmission was already weak. So uh, I'm not terribly concerned about beating on them too hard. Now then, that was a good stall speed. Let's uh, go look at one with a bad stall speed. Got my wife's FJ in here and I've got an ignition coil unplugged on it. So we'll go over here. this guy up. Now the stall speed on this one is 22 to 2250. All right, what do we got there? 1600 RPMs. So that is a low stall condition. I'm going to shut this guy off so we can talk for a second and then we'll do a line pressure test. Okay, so stall test. If you get a high stall speed, um, typically that's going to be slipping clutches, uh, slipping sprag or roller clutch. We could have a low pressure condition. Um, it could be a leaking seal inside the transmission, leaking hydraulic pressure somewhere, uh, low fluid, bad pump. Uh, plugged filter, something that would cause not enough hydraulic pressure. Um, so that's that. Now then, I want to do a line pressure test on this thing. 
I'll shut this door so it quit beeping at us. Line pressure specs for this car are here. It shows first gear if we go to the individual circuits, 130 to 140, 120 is the low, 120 to 130, 120 for second, third, fourth. Um, the car drives normal in all the other gears, so I'm just going to check first gear. And so first gear shows, get the right picture here, maybe not. It says, connect your oil pressure gauge to the first clutch pressure inspection hole C. We go down to the little picture here. It shows, coming out of the center of this case cover is a port, and that one is C. So let's go over to the car. All right, what I've got here, that line coming out of the transmission comes down here. I've got my homemade fitting because I didn't have the right one for my gauge screwed in. And we're gonna go up here, comes all the way up. I got taped where you can see it from inside the cab of the car. Now then if you can see there, my gauge goes to 140, which should be just enough to see what we need for this test. So we'll hop over here, fire up the car and put it in gear. I'll set you right there so you can see it. All right. We put it down into drive, which should give me first gear. And I've got 125-ish right now. Um, which is not terrible Once we get things warmed up, it'll actually come up and be normal now Then if you notice when I give it gas the pressure goes up That's because the more load we put on the transmission The more pressure we need to hold So that's that part another cool thing about this car here is if I put it in neutral if You can see that the car still drives uh, which could be normal, but it also could lead could mean that we have other issues All right, so we have pressure to first gear But we don't have Any first gear actual mechanical action So let's see what we got here I'll Open up my notes Okay, so recap this car we fixed the electrical problems. We got no more code anymore. It still drives wrong. Um, we've got fluid to the passage in first gear where we should to make this thing drive, but we don't actually get first gear. Um, there's a possibility that we have an internal leak in the transmission that it's hydraulically applying second at the same time as first, uh, which is a possibility. I've seen some really cool failures where we had internal leaks to, uh, that were fluid bled into another passage. Um, it could be that first is just completely slipping and it's defaulting in a second. Um, I don't know a lot about this particular transmission because Hondas are a little weird, um, but it's going to get a unit anyways. I've replaced a bunch of these transmissions in these cars and so this one's getting a transmission. And that's a pretty normal diagnostic process for this. Um, yeah, and that's that part. So if you're out there in YouTube land and you're watching this because this is open to public, uh, if you want to learn more about some car repairs and things of that stuff uh, like and subscribe and watch some of my videos um, if you want to make some money in a field that's essential uh, look us up um, at eastfieldcollege.edu for all of our automotive programs uh, also if you're interested in becoming a Toyota technician and making some good money uh, that's t-ten.com is t10.com I'll put the link in the description um, I'm sending this out to my high school instructors, so if you guys want to use this in some of your online stuff, feel free. I'll be posting more videos uh, on different subjects coming up. Um, finishing up transmission, auto trans this week, going into manual trans next week. Um, for my students, um, you have a quiz on this to do in Blackboard. You also have a lab sheet that goes with pressure tests, and grades are going in today. So everyone is getting an incomplete. And when school opens back up, we will redo the hands-on portions of the transmission diagnosis, and then I'll go in and put in grade changes for everybody. Um, and for that, thanks for watching, guys, and do your work.